smile and say amen. 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 Salvation has been brought down and it is available for whosoever will. Anyone that wants to be saved amen. can be. Amen. And the way you are to be saved is through Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus only. Yeah. We're so thankful to God for this blessed opportunity to be with you on tonight. Um, I want to thank Brother uh, Clay and the, uh, uh, the members of the uh, committee here for this blessed opportunity. Uh, this year's theme, as well as my topic, uh, is a head scratcher. <laughs> but it's one that uh, I like topical preaching anyway, and yeah. he made me think a little bit, and because uh, I had to call him to make sure we was on the same page. Uh -huh. And it seemed as though we were, so I figured I'd just do what I'm going to do and be done. Yes, sir. Uh, I have with me uh, on tonight uh, uh, my lovely wife, Glenda. Raise your hand, honey. Uh, she's uh, able to be with me on this occasion. I bring you greetings from the North Las Vegas Church of Christ. If you're ever in Las Vegas again, <laughs> and you happen to be there over a weekend, come to church. <laughs> Look for the church on Martin Luther King. We're the only one. Only Church of Christ on Martin Luther King. There's about six of them there in the city, in the valley, but North Las Vegas is where we uh, labor, and we welcome you to come and worship with us anytime you're in our fair city. Uh, my, my topic tonight is a long one. I'm sure you see it in your book. You saw it on the screen. Even the Moderator had problems with it. Uh, instrumental musics fall down in the downfall of church worship. I was given Daniel chapter 3, verse 5, as a, a text, as well as Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 9. What I'm going to do, if you don't mind, I want us to get a, a, a better context of the scripture. If you would, Daniel chapter 3, I'm going to read verse 1 through 6, and then we're going to go to Matthew chapter 15, and we're going to read verse 7 through verse number 9, and then we'll be on our way. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 1 through 6 tells us there that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. Mm -hmm. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Verse 2. The, then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province mm -hmm. to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, mm -hmm. set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar set up. See, it's important you pay attention to that repetition. Right. King Nebuchadnezzar set this image up. And the Bible says, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Verse 4. Then all herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the coronet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king set up. Yeah. Verse number six says, Whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. I don't know. I, I just kind of think, uh, Smith, that the Lord operated like that today. Mm. Maybe folk would act right. Yeah. <laughs> Go with me to Matthew. Let's get the New Testament uh, uh, passage that was given, Matthew chapter 15. And I was given verse number 9, but we're going to look at 7 through 9. The Bible here says, and this is Jesus talking, he says, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, they honor me with their lips. But their heart 
is far from me. But in vain do they worship me. <laughs> Teaching for doctrines. The commandments of men. Now, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but uh, I just believe that God has provided everything that we need to obey him and be pleasing uh, in his sight. One of the areas that makes the Church of Christ unique or different is that it's obedience to the scriptures. Believing that God has given us all that we need that pertain to life and God in 2 Peter 2, 1, 3, we strive to stay within the boundaries, trusting that if we just learn to do what God said to do, the way he said do it, yeah. that's enough to please God and save us. Yeah. We believe that God hushed on purpose. Yeah. Y'all know what hush means, right? Yeah. Quit talking. God quit talking on purpose. We know, as the Bible tells us, that in does us uh, divers and sundry times in divers manners that God spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets and in these last days has spoken to us by his son Jesus uh, uh, you can listen to Jesus anytime you want doesn't matter what time it is day or night doesn't matter what's going on you can listen to Jesus anytime you want. And I'll tell you another secret. Yeah. Uh, you can talk to Jesus. He'll listen to you anytime you want to talk to him. Amen. And so with the things that's going on in our religious world and in the Lord's church today, why would anybody not talk to Jesus or ask Jesus for the answers to their questions or concerns, but rather go and ask some other person who is in the same shape, same boat we're in. Nobody down here has been to heaven. Nobody down here knows how to get to heaven except through Christ. He's the one that was had been there, Amen. came here, and went back, and he can tell us how to get there. Amen. But yet we want to talk to one another. Amen. Talk to the one that's the most educated or that speaks the most uh, nice and sound and I mean, all kind of reasons come up as to why people it seems doesn't take God at his word Amen. God added no more to it when he stopped and he took nothing away from it when he finished it Amen. then he told us not, at, not to add to and not to take from therefore the challenge men had is to fully trust and obey God, yeah. believing that God has told us all that we need to know, yeah. to praise him, to worship him, and to be saved. Right. You can run with that. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Instrumental musics fall down in the downfall of church worship. Let me try just for a quick minute to untangle this topic first because I had to keep untangling it in my own mind <laughs> and I want to present it to you plain and simple. Uh -huh. In Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom uh, he had the authority to uh, uh, dictate or say what he want done in his kingdom. Yeah. Here it's clear that and that's why I was trying to tell you look how many times it says Nebuchadnezzar the king set up yeah. the image. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar the king said, uh, that's important. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it was his kingdom. Yeah. Uh, his kingdom, though it was God's people, his kingdom, he was in charge. Sometimes God can't give people authority and power. <laughs> All right. uh, they, they, they lose their ever-loving mind and forget where they got it from and start doing their own thing. That's what creates problems in the Lord's church today. Yeah. Most preachers don't come into the Lord's church acting a fool. <laughs> it's only after they get in there and realize they got some power that they start yeah. losing their mind. Yeah. And you know what? I don't just blame the preachers. You folk who sit on the pew, you're going to be held accountable for allowing a lot of this mess that goes on in the Lord's church. Amen. I guarantee you a preacher won't stay at a congregation if ain't nobody there. 
Say it again. Trace go broke, they hit the door. All right, <laughs> if you can't get him to leave, you leave. Yeah. You remember, you trying to, and I know, I know that that kind of hurts some folk. <laughs> because you get your mind messed up. You get to saying crazy stuff like, well, I've been at this church all my life. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord can send a hurricane your way and wipe that building out. <laughs> Hello? Hey. And the church is still there. Huh. Yeah. So we need to understand what is the church? You are the church. Are. Yeah. Right. Amen. Can't nobody teach you false doctrine if you won't sit and listen? Right. Can't nobody lead you astray if you don't follow? That's right. I know we want to blame somebody for what's happening to us, but you ain't got nobody to blame but yourself. That's right. Because on the day of judgment, God ain't going to take no excuses. Mm. I can hear him saying now when they say, well, Brother Gay said blah, blah, blah. He's going to say, well, what did I say? Mm. Well, Brother Gay didn't tell us, well, what did I say? See, that's what you want to know. What thus said the Lord? Amen. Now, my focus tonight is on this instrumental music business. Uh, uh, this was Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. And by his authority, instrumental music was called, or was a call rather, to fall down and worship. Not Nebuchadnezzar, but the image that he set up. He had sense enough to not to try to make folk worship him. But that image that he built, that's who they were to worship. And not only that, uh, he gave them an ultimatum. The Bible says that basically all kinds of music was included in this call to worship. He said, doesn't matter when you hear the music, when you hear the sound, and then it lists all of these instruments, and then it went on to say, and all music. So when you hear music, you're supposed to fall down and worship this image. Mm. And if you don't, mm. the Bible says that you was going to be cast into uh. that fiery furnace. So I just tried to rewrite it and put it this way. Uh, their fall, the fall down was to refuse, uh, the downfall, I'm sorry, was to refuse to fall down. Thus, Resulted in a violent death for them. Now that's in Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. See, none of us, you ought to be thankful, is not in Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. Yeah, yeah. We're in the Lord's kingdom. Amen. We're in the kingdom that the God of heaven yeah. set up. Yeah. And the God of heaven tells us what to do in his kingdom. The God of heaven has the authority to tell us what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he left anything out. Amen. If he did, he would have told us. <laughs> hey, right. But he didn't. That's yeah. right. That's right. Now, 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 we understand, I believe, that instrumental music has no place. Brothers and sisters, hear me plainly. No place, no place. in the worship of the Lord's kingdom or the Lord's church. That's right. Amen. For many folk, instrumental music have become their downfall. In the worship of the Lord. Uh -huh. Many still fear and respect people more and prefer what people say over what Christ has said. Uh -huh. The question is by what authority do they do this? Uh -huh. Who gave them the authority to bring instrumental music or anything else not in scripture into the Lord's church? Uh -huh. It wasn't the Lord. No, it wasn't the Lord's apostles. No, mm -hmm. People question and I just wonder if they realize that, but I believe they do. They question Jesus' authority today in their actions. You know, we got folk in the church. Uh, 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 there's a saying that folk vote with their feet. You know, if, if people don't like what you're doing, they just won't come. Yeah. Hello? Amen. That's why I know that a congregation of the Lord's people who have been taught right and studied their Bibles can't be led wrong if they don't want to be led wrong. Right, 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 right. Evidently, they was never converted in the first place. Amen. You know, it's very important for us to understand that everybody in the Lord's church is not converted. Amen. See, there's a difference between being converted, being convicted. Uh, you can be convicted. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that on the day of Pentecost, when that sermon was preached, they were convicted. When it says they were pricked in their heart, it means they were convicted. Right. Yeah. Right. 
but they wasn't necessarily converted. Right, right. Peter had been with Jesus all of those years, all of that time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Peter was convicted, mm. but Peter wasn't converted. The Lord had to tell him, when you converted, strengthen your brothers. There's a difference in being convicted and being converted. The, Lord's, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ is meant to convict your heart, mm. to make you think. Mm. I was preaching yesterday and I was trying to get folk to understand you ain't going to I know it ain't a good word but it's true you ain't going to heaven <laughs> just off sermon mm. have you ever noticed how sad it is nowadays that you can't get folk in Bible class anymore mm -hmm. yeah. amen yeah. amen yeah. I don't know how they have sliced this thing or deciphered it and somehow come to the conclusion that Bible class is not important. Bible class is not an assembly. Mm. Not forsaking the assembly is not just talking about don't come to worship. Uh, assembly means you come together. So when when the church is together and you're supposed to be a member of that church, where are you? Mm. <laughs> that just lets me know that stuff that's going on in the Lord's church is going on because people want it so. Yeah. Huh. Mm. Say it. <laughs> I don't think there's a preacher in here want to want to have their members get up and walk out on them. Mm -mm. Do you? No. No, sir. <laughs> no. Uh, did y'all stop lying to him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the truth. There are people leaving the Lord's church for lots of reasons. Yeah. And it ain't because of the truth. Mm. It's because people want to hear lies. Mm. And when you when you get off the truth, yeah. you're competing now with other lies. Mm. So it boils down to who can tell the best lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who can put on the best performances? Uh, watch out now. How can we be all of the same mind and the same judgment if we're reading the same book? Mm. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I only made it to, well, that's not true. I was about to say I only made it to high school. But I, I, I went to a little bit of college. <laughs> You know, I, I I didn't go on campus. I was in the military. I got my degrees in the military. Now, I'm going to tell you something right here, right now. Uh, that degree ain't helped me one bit. <laughs> I didn't get it because I needed the education. I got it because I needed the education to get promoted. I couldn't get that last strike until after I got that bachelor's degree. So I went and got my degree. Matter of fact, I got a little copy of it in my wallet right now. Well, one of my wallets somewhere. And I got one somewhere at the house. Never even give it a second thought. The things that they taught me there has nothing to do with what I'm trying to do here. Mm. Uh, the, the only education a person really needs is to know, at least know how to read and write. That's important. That's education too. Yeah. It starts with kindergarten, I think. You know. But all of this mess that we are caught up in now, folks somehow have come up with the definitions of the words song and singing and 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 and, and, and <laughs> some old. I mean, they come up with all kinds of stuff. the Greek and the, and the Hebrew. And this. Okay. Uh, uh, when, when I read scripture, even in the New Testament, there's nothing in there but sing. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, back, back to this, I want to show you something here. Uh, when I ask what authority do, do these men get this from, Jesus taught and prepared his apostles for the Holy Spirit, for the coming of the Holy Spirit. He said when he was with them in John 14, 25 through 26, these things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father is going to send in my name. Watch what he says. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have 
said unto you. Yeah. Now Jesus taught them a lot of stuff. They saw a lot of stuff. But you know what this tells me? The Lord don't want them or you and I relying on our memory. That's why. He don't want us relying on our Y'all know how bad this can get. <laughs> I don't know how many things I forgot today. <laughs> I didn't forget that I spoke been preaching tonight, <laughs> but I forgot a whole lot of stuff today. Yeah. Uh, if I was relying on my memory to get me to heaven, I ain't gonna make it. Amen. And neither are you. Amen. You have the written word of God, which is your map from earth to glory, and if you don't pay attention to it, there's a really good chance you're not gonna get where you say you want to go. Amen. That's right. Jesus gave his apostles authority. And they had the authority to charge others with the authority mm -hmm. to teach the same things. Mm -hmm. What did the apostles bind? He didn't say anything to them about using instrumental music. And they didn't say anything to us about using instrumental music, only singing. So who gave men the authority to introduce instrumental music into the Lord's worship? Mm. Uh, a pioneer preachers may not have been as educated as a lot of our preachers today, yeah. but they had sense enough to know what don't add to me, yeah. don't take away me. Amen. Yet you got folk leaving the Lord's church following these men because of their degrees. Somewhere I remember Jesus said, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. They've been blinded by their education. Yeah. Mm. Blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, Jesus said they both shall fall into the ditch. They accepted these pioneer preachers, and I hope we do too. That forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. In any other context, you know what settled means, don't you? It means it's finished. It means it's done. You don't do nothing else with it. The Lord's word is settled. And it wasn't settled here, it's settled in heaven. Now, who, won't, who can change it? If it's settled in heaven, that's where you got to go to change it. And yet people are falling for the foolishness down here, talking about they want to go up there. It's just not, it's just not going to happen. What, what's happened to us nowadays? Too many are preferring what's popular over the scriptures. We have a generation or some generation that has risen up that don't know our God. Yeah. Maybe their parents didn't tell them or <laughs> live their lives before them uh -huh. that, uh, of the one Lord, the one faith, the one baptism. Yeah. Maybe they told them, but the children just weren't interested in mm. what they had to say and what their parents believed. Even when they're given book, chapter, and verse, That's right. it's still not enough mm -hmm. to correct the minds or the hearts of many folk today. Well, and if that's all we have, then the question becomes, how on earth are they going to be saved? The downfall of them falling down to idol worship then becomes the standard. Yeah. It sounds good. It feels good. Mm. But spiritually, it's no good. <laughs> when we are assembled together. Yes. And we are engaged in our singing praises to the Lord. Yeah. Every member in the building ought to be singing, making melodies in their hearts unto the Lord. Some folk act like they're singing to the person next to them. <laughs> Say that for when you get in the car. <laughs> you know, it, it's one of those things where you, you get folk in the car. Some folks say in the shower, but I've seen them in the car. You get folk in the car, they'll be driving down the road in the car, they had that radio turning up loud, and they just be going, and you swear they in concert. <laughs> but let them come into the Lord's house. Yeah. And you ask them to, you even tell them what page to turn to. Some folk won't even pick up a song. Yeah. It's all right if you know the song, but yeah. if you don't know the song, and won't pick up a book, and won't sing, you have a hard heart toward God. Yeah. Amen. You're not worshiping God. What if you don't recognize, brothers and sisters, you're worshiping Satan. You know what worshiping Satan consists of? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Doing anything that opposes God. That's right. <laughs> if what you're doing is against God, it's for Satan. That's right. 
you hear people talking about we got thousands of uh, yeah. uh, uh, membership and with the title Church of Christ, and they're doing all kind of foolishness that you can't even find in Scripture. Why? I'll tell you why. They came out of. Say it. Say it. There's, there's a saying that says, uh, I'm from the country too, bro. <laughs> Louis there's, a, there's a saying that says, You can take me out of the country, but you can't take the country out of me. <laughs> With folk in denomination, you can take them out of denomination, bring them into the Lord's church, but that don't mean you've taken the denomination out of them. They come into the Lord's church and they want to do the same stuff they did back there. You don't believe me? Let somebody come up in here and even a preacher. Yes, sir. Uh, sometimes I get a little bit nervous when uh, certain preachers come through Las Vegas. If you come through and I know you, you gonna preach. If you come through and I don't know you, you might preach. But boy, I got eyes and ears on you the whole time. <laughs> because if let's say for instance, if where I preach. We have conditioned folk through the teaching of the gospel and how we practice, how we do our worship service, that you don't be clapping and hollering and doing all of that. And Rufus comes to North Las Vegas and he get up in the pulpit and he says, come on, church. Come on, church. And he's going to do it. They they better not. He he better be a solo act. And depending on how long he does it, we may just call time out. (laughs) That's how you know when your membership know right from wrong. That's right. Nobody should be able to come in and get them to do something that you as their minister and leader has been teaching them against all of this time. Amen. Just because... I don't know if he looks good, sounds good, or they done heard about how he how he preached. He gonna tell them to do something that they don't normally do. That's right, that's right. I'm gonna talk to him. Then when he's gone, I'm gonna deal with them. Amen. And I'm gonna be dealing with him from the book. And it's gonna be in love. This is going to be in love. You can preach the gospel in love. That don't mean I got to like what they did. It'll show too. But we have that awesome responsibility of leading God's people. And it's not what the people want. It's what the Lord wants for his people. And he put preachers in that position to make sure that that's happening. But for whatever reason... It don't seem to be happening in some of our churches. No one is exempt from singing praises to the Lord. Jesus sings with us. Hebrews chapter 1, 9 through 12. Uh, I, I want you to hear what Hebrews says. Though I know you know already. I'm bringing it again to your remembrance. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9 through verse number 12. The Bible says, uh, I hope I got the right verse, 9 through 12. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Uh, therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth and of the heavens and are works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. Yeah. Uh, I kind of got a feeling here I might have the, the wrong verse. I think I'm looking for the verse that tells me that the Lord sings uh, with us, with the, with the praises of our... Here we go. Here we go. I'm sorry. That, that, that was the wrong passage that I gave you. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4. I think I probably wrote it down wrong, but I know what I want to say here. One second. One second. Let me check to be sure. 9 through 11. Uh, is that it? 9 through 11. Uh, I, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Take your time. He just told me I had five minutes. I think that's five minutes of my sermon. And then I'm going to give you the Savior's invitation. Uh, Hebrews chapter 7, if you would, please. Uh, I, I'm thinking... Is it seven? All right. What? I know as soon as I leave it, 
It'll come back to me. See, that's why I told you, I don't even, re- even, I'm not relying on memory. I can't even remember what the scripture was. <laughs> because I wrote it down wrong, and I've been reading the scripture and not necessarily the verse. But the point that we're trying to make is this. By him, uh, uh, who is better than Jesus? Remember I said Jesus sings with us. So who's better than Jesus? The Bible says in 13, 15, by him therefore, yeah. let us offer sacrifice of praise to God yeah. continually. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Yeah. The fruit of your lips, that don't mean blowing a horn. Well, no. That uh, it don't, definitely don't mean beating drums, playing on the piano. Right. It means sing. Yeah. In New Testament teaching, all we find is sing. Why is it that people don't want to sing? Amen. See, if I had my way, if the Lord let me have my way just for one Sunday worship, <laughs> here's what I would do. I'd tell them first, and I'd tell them, we're going to start singing. We're going to sing this song. Here's the page number. Here's the title. We're going to sing. Matter of fact, we're going to sing all four verses. <laughs> Anybody who won't sing will be cast out of the building. <laughs> that ain't gonna be enough, but I just want to show you how this works. Some of them, somebody might get up and go because they want to go anyway. So I didn't really do much for them. I let them off the hook. But if I told, them, and I had the power, to, anybody that don't sing this song this morning. Yeah. By God's authority given to me, you shall be cast in hell. Now, unless they don't believe God has given me that authority, I think we're going to be have some angelic singing. We'll be raising the roof. Our problem is we don't have any consequences right now for our disobedience. We don't have that immediate gratification when we don't do what the Lord says. So, therefore, we think we got time. I don't see where he said preachers sing, hmm. just the members sing. He said we should all sing, yeah. making melody unto our heart, into our hearts unto the Lord. Just as Satan can prevent you from listening, from repenting. You know, you have people that come to church on Sunday, know they need to repent, but they ain't getting up. Hmm. Just like Satan can keep you from repenting, from giving, from taking communion. From forgiving others like you should, he can prevent you from singing. Don't allow the yielding to instrumental music to be your downfall in worshiping our Lord. He has told us what he wants. He wants us to sing. Brother and sister, that's plainly written, plainly read, and plainly delivered tonight. Run, tell that. <laughs> you can run with that. That's the truth yes, of the gospel. Yes, I, I'm one of those preachers. I, 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 I despise now preachers who refuse to give the Savior's invitation. Yeah. How else are you going to let somebody know what they need to do to be saved? Even Billy Graham had an invitation that he would give the folk. His invitation would make a lot of y'all mad if he said, remember what he says. He says, now you can go to the church of your choice. Uh, so, so watch this now. What if your house was the church? All y'all got a house. All y'all house is the church. And he started telling people, go to the church of your choice. And you start having all these people show up at your house. <laughs> Hello? You want to know how they got there, don't you? You want to know who told them they could be at your house. See, Billy Graham don't have the authority that Jesus has. And for a man not to want to give the Lord's plan of salvation, to let men, women, and children know what they must do in order to be saved, that person should be despised. God despises them. Amen. He still loves you. You got to, as a preacher, you got to learn to love and despise. Amen. Hello? Uh, you remember when the Bible te- talks about hating? The Bible, you know, everybody said, we shouldn't, we shouldn't hate. Mm. Well, <laughs> it depends. Huh. depends on what you're talking about. <laughs> you can hate the devil. Mm-hmm. You can hate evil. Well, the Lord hates yeah. evil. That's right. 
And I don't think the Lord uh, won't allow me to do anything that he don't do. Well, that's right. I, think that's a, I think that's a good relationship there. Amen. He wants me to despise evil. He wants me to hate evil, learn to do good, love righteousness. Yes, sir. You can't do that on your own. Well, no, you have to have the spirit of God in you in order for that to happen. Amen. And that's what happens to a lot of our churches. The spirit of God is not in the well, worship service anymore. Amen. This stuff that they call the spirit, remember there's, there's Hey. There's three there's three types of spirit. <laughs> Y'all know that, right? Yeah. You have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You have the evil spirit. Yeah. And you have your spirit. Uh-huh. And your spirit is influenced by one or the other. Yeah. You, for, for a person to claim they have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. Mm-hmm. And they disobey what God says. God says they're lying. Well, so I don't have to get into a, bait, a debate with somebody to know they lie. <laughs> All I got to do is listen for what they're saying. Yeah. And if what you say ain't what he said, you lie. Well, <laughs> you don't call me a lie. I didn't. He did. <laughs> Preacher, God bless you. How are people saved today? Well, they're simply saved by first hearing God's word. <laughs> Believing God's word. Repenting of their sins, confessing Jesus to be God's son, being buried in water for the remission of your sins. That's the only place. Mm. Number one, your sins can be forgiven. And it's only after that that you are added to the Lord's church. We still got Church of Christ people saying, oh, I I, I joined the church over at North DeSoto last week. (laughs) You ain't joined nothing. But see, you got to be careful. You can't talk to babes like that. Why? They haven't got that denomination. There's a lot of them yet. You have to teach that out of them. And you teach it by showing them every time they say they join, you tell them, go read Acts chapter 2, verse number 47. The Lord adds to his church. You may join Rufus's church, but the Lord adds to his church. Daily, such as should be said. Well, then he says you got to be faithful unto that. Yeah. You ain't dead yet. You still need to be faithful. Yeah. If you ain't dead yet and you're not <laughs> faithful, then the rest of this, and I'll give unto you a crown of life. Uh-huh. Remember, that follows be faithful right. unto death and I'll give you a crown of righteousness. Right. If you're not faithful, you can't be, a, you shouldn't be expecting a crown. I try to watch my speech sometime. I stop trying to say what folk can't do because you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> you can do whatever you want to do. But if it ain't what God says, it's going to cause you to be lost. Well, Nobody who wants to be saved needs to be lost. If you're here and you're a member of the lost church and, and you have something on your heart you want to make known to the congregation or you just want to get yourself back right with the Lord, you can do it right now while we stand and sing the Savior's invitation song. <laughs>